If it's in the Bible, we want it. If it's not in the Bible, we don't want it. Jesus does not guess about the future. He knows the future. You don't want to miss one minute of this broadcast. This is Revelation's final warning. Before the judgment closes, everyone will be pronounced accepted or rejected. Revelation's final warning. Before the judgment closes, everyone rejected or accepted. Many Bible students have recognized that the messages that Jesus gives to the seven churches of Revelation in Revelations chapters 2 and 3 were not only meant for actual churches that existed in the time of the Apostle John, but were also prophetic messages that would apply to the church, that is, God's people, at different stages throughout history, starting from the time of John and spanning to the last day church, Laodicea. So, for example, the first church, the Ephesus church, corresponded with the church that was in existence in the time of John. And the last church, Laodicea, is the church that would be in existence in the days right before the second coming of Christ. In other words, the Christians of today are the Laodicean church, the seventh church, the last of the churches. As we read the message of Jesus to the Laodicean church, any pretentious self-righteousness is shattered to smithereens. Matter of fact, we are in desperately alarming condition, and this is serious. Here is Jesus' diagnosis in Revelations 3, 14 to 16. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Watch this. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will, watch this, vomit you out of my mouth. Whoa. Jesus says that Laodicea is making him nauseous, so much so that he is about ready to vomit many out of his mouth. Now some people want to sanitize this picture, but there is no sanitizing. It is not a good picture at all. But here is the thing. The word vomit, also known as emesis, is a complex reflex coordinated by a specific center in the brain stem. And when it is stimulated, it is an involuntary reflux controlled by the autonomic nervous system. It's a reaction, in other words. So in other words, Jesus is not doing the rejecting per se, it is the natural result of our own choice of being lukewarm when we could have chosen to be cold, that is refreshing others with our love from God, or hot, that is passionately in love with God. So let's read on verse 17 says, Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Jesus is warning us that we don't see the danger that we are in. We say we are rich, but we are actually bankrupt. Spiritually speaking, we are feeling pretty good about ourselves. We are patting ourselves on the back for our moral accomplishments. We are proud, spiritually proud. We are self-made. We present ourselves as if exquisitely dressed when in truth we are spiritually naked and completely destitute. We are not in love with our Savior, Jesus Christ. That is, many are not. So, alarmingly, the condition of Laodicea seems to line up with the condition of the religious establishment in the time of Christ. Matthew 21, 8 to 12, we find an interesting incident that seems out of character for Jesus. As Jesus is walking with his disciples towards Jerusalem under the hot sun, he is feeling very hungry. They happen to walk by a beautiful fig tree that was fully covered with green leaves. It appeared to be very fruitful. However, Jesus, so Jesus walked over to pick some of its fruit, but surprise, there was no fruit to be found in it, none. So then Jesus cursed the tree. Jesus said, may you never bear fruit again. At that moment, the tree actually shriveled up. Wow, amazing. Was Jesus fooled by a fig tree? Was he angry at the fig tree? 
Jesus was simply using this as a powerful, striking illustration to impress a very important truth upon his disciples. The pretentious tree was just like the pretentious religious leaders. Their appearance was promising, but they had none of the fruits of the Spirit. They lacked God's love and mercy. The religious leaders of Israel appeared to be faithful to God through their rituals and outward appearance. They claimed to be rich in God's blessings, and they did not sense their need of a Savior because they were children of Abraham. So they claimed to keep the law. Yet they were blinded by jealousy, hatred, murderous intentions. They lacked true spiritual faithfulness or fruitfulness and obedience to God's will. This is why Jesus called them hypocrites. He also called them blind guides. So he said, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You are like whitewashed tombs which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. Matthew 23, verse 27. Unfortunately, it seems that in these last days, history is being repeated. The message to Laodicea and the cursing of the fig tree warns us against being a hypocritical, prideful, and blind Christian. Do we confess Christ, yet not have genuine faith which leads to loving obedience? Are we conforming to this outward appearances without an inner connection and bond with our Savior? How are we treating others? How can we have this genuine faith that steers clear of hypocrisy, pride, and lukewarmness? We must be eager to know what Jesus recommends for his wayward children. If you are interested in finding a Sabbath-keeping church near you, text or email us your name, city, and state at 972-268-4555 or email us from around the world, amazingprophecies at gmail.com. So just text us your name and city and we will send you a link to a Seventh-day Sabbath-keeping church near you. Also, we have a brand new scripture memorization channel called Forever Free Scripture to the number two music. You can go there and subscribe. It's brand new. It's only been in existence for a couple of months. And we've got about 12 scripture memorization videos to help you memorize scripture. And so very powerful scriptures to help you and aid you to memorize scripture. Also, we have a colorful magazine Dan, an e-magazine on Daniel and Revelation. We want to get it into your hands. It's an e-magazine. Just click on the link below. Let's keep going. Here is the counsel from Jesus to us. Revelation 3, 18 to 20. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. Point by point prescription from Jesus for our desperate condition. Number one, buy from me gold refined in the fire. Genuine faith is like gold because just like gold is refined in the fire, so also our faith is purified and strengthened as we endure our trials. So, as our faith is purified, fruit will appear in our lives, the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus invites us to buy the, this gold from him. How do we buy it? We exchange our unbelief and our sins and his faith for his faith, his forgiveness, and his righteousness. When we consent to this exchange, we develop a genuine, enduring faith that will endure and stand the fiery trials that come our way. Genuine faith will result in genuine works of obedience, fruit. Number two, that you may be rich. To be truly rich is receive God's word and the promise of eternal life and to be a citizen of the kingdom of heaven. True riches are not earthly wealth and possessions, but salvation. By directing his disciples to invest in heavenly treasures, Jesus 
teaches the importance of living with an eternal perspective and seeking after the things of God rather than being consumed by materialism or worldly ambitions. Number three, and white garments that you may be clothed. Laodicea is banking on our own works. They are disregarding God's commandments and saying it doesn't matter. Yet they seek to convert, pardon me, cover themselves with their own ideas of what is right. Jesus says, you are naked. Please take my righteousness. Only my righteousness, my white garment, will cover your shame. So, redemption can only be obtained through the blood of Jesus Christ. And as his followers, we must recognize that our salvation lies in trusting in Jesus, not in our own works. Number four, anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. The city of Laodicea was known for its production of eye salve, a medicinal ointment used to treat AI ailments. Jesus uses this imagery to convey the spiritual condition of the church. Laodicea leans on their own interpretation of the word. They are not looking at things through the lenses of the Bible, truly. They are going with what is right in their own eyes. They are blind guides. Jesus offers the eyes salve that they need. He urges his followers to seek spiritual discernment and knowledge by reading and studying his word and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. We are called to love and embrace the truth so that we do not fall for lies. It will be seen if we have the truth, if we love the truth, by whether we follow the truth in reality. Jesus says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. Revelation 3, 19 and 20. We are not to despair, but to repent. We are not to get offended, but to humble ourselves. We are not to be discouraged, but encouraged that Jesus' amazing love for us is what motivates him to warn us. Jesus will provide what we need, a hot or cold Christian, if only we will turn to him. We must prayerfully heed the words of warning that Jesus gives his last day followers. May we hear his words have ears to hear and eyes to see. He is our loving Father who knows his children well. Let's have a word of prayer. Father in heaven, thank you so much, Lord, that you love us. Thank you for your kindness, for your goodness. Thank you that this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith, according to 1 John 5 and verse 4. Oh, dear Jesus, help us to love you with all of our heart and with all of our soul and with all of our might. I pray that I know, Lord, that those who are tuned in right now to this broadcast, you led them to the channel. Help them to subscribe. Help them to stand with us. Help them to like and share this program to get the gospel out to the world more fully, more profoundly. Oh, Lord, you are so good to us. Please abide with us, Lord. You died for us, Jesus. We want to live for you. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Remember, we, we love you, we care for you, and remember Jesus died for you.